The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed in the grace of our Lord, so that to the praise of his glory we all might come to show forth, to tell the reality of the word. To tell the word, we need to witness for the word and to in order to witness or to tell. It is much essential for us to know that we make sure that we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the confession of our sin through remount, which is not an open confession, but rather privately telling to Lord God the Father, either by thought, word, or deed, whichever manner you might have sinned, and cause to grieve, to squelch, and to lie to the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and getting back into fellowship with him by that confession of our sin wherewith we might have done it either by thought or word or deed but as of now as we walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit it is so much essential for us that we every breath that we take it has to be absolute necessary to be in the fellowship of the spirit Without the true fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is no way possible for us to really take in the real burden which has been laid down upon this life of the angelic conflict, wherewith you and I have been given this great privilege in order to serve this great Lord. Never in this life again we come back in the form of flesh and blood. After we depart from this earth, either by death or, or rapture, whichever way it could be, prior to that, as long as we live in this earth, as long as we tabernacle in this flesh and blood, it is much more essential for us that each and every breath we take, every second we count, has to be used for MGG, or maximum glorification for God, as we know what is the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height pertaining to the plan of God, and understand what it is to comprehend and with all saints, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in giving us the real work, the real work of all time that a man could cherish is nothing but to be a great witness for this truth. In this world, there can never be anything more. In this world, that there can never be anything else that we can think we can really sustain. But we are interested to know only one thing, and that one thing is nothing but you and I have to be very much faithful enough in understanding what is God's will. The great passage, what we can learn from the book of Romans chapter 16, that Satan will be trampled under your feet shortly, that means speedily, which is so much essential for us, that we are no longer worried about the devil's power upon us. We are no longer worried upon anything else on this earth which Satan can claim until and unless we know what is its thinking from the word of the Lord itself. What is Satan? What is its mind? Where we can meet face to face in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28? And what are its schemes and plans and strategies and tactics? Until and unless you learn it from the word of the Lord, you cannot understand it. You may think, this could be great, that could be great. Satan is behind me, Satan is in front of me. It is doing this, it is doing that. No. Our Lord has told for us in Romans chapter 16, prior writing to the mystery doctrine of the church age, an introduction in Romans Romans chapter 16 verses 25 and 26 very great words of all time under the under the inspiration of Lord God the Holy Spirit it he says that the trampling under our feet will take place because we are going to absolutely destroy Satan and our Lord has done it the only thing wherewith now we are being staying alive is to see that the real model also can do the same thing which our Lord has done. But many of the people do not understand the simple words, but rather they want to indulge themselves into their lives, which doesn't have any value, meaning, definition at all. They want to indulge in their lives 
to the reality of their works and they want to say that it could be done or it could be in this manner or in that manner but we have a great lesson to be learned and our lord says in romans chapter 16 verse 20 and the god of peace that is what until unless you make the word of the lord to dwell in you richly you don't have the peace as colossians 3 16 and 17 but here we have in verse 20 and the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet shortly that is what we have the conclusion verse of romans 16 20 but we do have another time written for us the manifestation of the mystery doctrine in very true in verse 25 and 26 the mystery doctrine which has been hidden the conclusion which has been written the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ be with you all amen further it says now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of jesus christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now it has been made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophet according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of this great faith therefore to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ our Savior forever and forever amen what a great verse of conclusion Apostle Paul writes over here in the epistle of Romans but we do have in Romans 16 20 the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly God of peace if our Lord can have that character and he tells to us in Colossians 3 15 through 16 you can also have that umpire as your peace that umpire will nothing but the word of God as you grow up you have that has your peace and when this peace is surpassing you you are absolutely under your feet bruising out Satan and why are you not able to understand the simple truth not get the Holy Spirit who indwells in us is greater than the one who is in this world in this world is devil but we do have Lord God the Holy Spirit the great one indwelling in us and why do we need to worry and what for we need to worry and where are we worrying and what is the sense that we are absolutely interested to worry dear brethren this is of a very great and true lesson that we are going to pass through in this church age but several times we are not able to understand what is happening to us all the time because being out of fellowship constantly not walking in the spirit not living in the spirit not yielding unto the fruit of the spirit we are are looking for the temporary solutions which do not carry any value at all these temporary solutions of frantic search of happiness they think this could be the peace the ministers entering into the pulpit they think money could be the peace but they never know the real peace will not come to them until and unless they start to exegete isolate and categorize the subject according to the right dispensing technique of dispensations and to rightly divide the word of the Lord many people think that we are happy by following weekly ones to the church but the word of the Lord tells day by day renovation of your thinking if you are not able to do that in a day by day process of learning the word of the Lord then you have already lost it therefore dear brethren you need to be very cautious this unique dispensation of the church age is very rare and above all the alive in this earth in the same flesh and blood is very rare only once we come time is very valuable life is very precious and as we take the breath after knowing so much of doctrine after learning about the angelic conflict after looking upon the things pertaining to the word of the Lord that they have been trampling it down under their feet rather than trampling Satan under their feet this man they have really destroyed Bible doctrine so we came to know what is the reality of the word now and we have a now new definition new purpose new meaning and the work is Psalms 138 2, which is of a great definition for us to know our Lord has made his word or honored his word above his name then who are we to not to honor his word above his name and why do we indulge ourselves in the useless and worthless speculations of the things that are happening around dear brethren think over these issues which is of a great essential for us we come only once on this earth and when once we when, when once we depart we don't have anything else to say back or regret or repent at the judgment seat of Christ and say Lord provide me once more now 
now. Now you have been given. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation if you're an unbeliever. And today is the time for you to renovate your thinking in a day-by-day -day process. Past is past till yesterday. Today is a new day, new beginning. If you're still alive, God wants a grace. God has given to you grace upon you. And God still has a plan upon you. So he has kept you alive. So why do you want to die as a warning discipline, intensified discipline, or sin unto death? Confess your sins and get back into fellowship with Lord. Roman, Revelation 3.19 tells to us, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens, I'm going to come and have fellowship with him. And in 1 Corinthians 11.30, for squelching of the spirit, we have to judge yourself. And for the third one, even though if you don't listen to the intensified stage of the discipline, you have to look upon one thing. And that one thing is really of a great work. That is sin dying face to face. And this face to face sin, which leads to death, has to be no one could be prayed. Therefore, dear brethren, before you can come and occur to that stage, better for you to use rebound, make sure you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and come back and learn doctrine. We shall continue in the next step. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with the word. We pray that God of the Holy Spirit lend us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank you.